We've all heard the phrase seeing is believing, but sometimes it's difficult to believe something is real even when you've seen it with your own eyes. That's how archaeologists and historians feel about the amazing things you're about to see in this video. They've looked at them and studied them, but no matter how much they study them, they're still left with the same sense of wonder. We hope that you get a sense of wonder yourself as we tell you their stories. There are so many ancient artifacts buried in Egypt that we may never find all of them. Even though hundreds of archaeological sites in the country have been fully excavated over the years, there's always a new one for experts to sink their teeth into, and a sarcophagus that turned up at a construction site in Alexandria in December 2019 is a great example. The 2,000-year-old black sarcophagus dates back to the Ptolemaic period and was found 16 feet below ground level by workers from the Supreme Council of Antiquities in Sidi Gaber as they built new offices in the area. The coffin is still sealed, but a heavily weathered bust found alongside it might have provided a clue as to who the occupant might be if it were in better condition. Sadly, time and nature have eroded the bust very badly. Only wealthy people from that era would have been buried in such a heavy black granite sarcophagus. So when the 15-ton lid of the casket is finally lifted away, we may find that it contains the remains of a long-lost leader, perhaps even Alexander the Great. Don't hold your breath waiting to find out, though. Full excavation may take five years. Experienced archaeologists have seen a lot of things, so it's not always easy to impress them. When they describe a discovery as the find of a lifetime, it's usually worth listening to them. That's exactly how this passage tomb in Ireland has been described, and it's easy to see why. Located in County Meath, the monument has some of the most detailed and well-preserved pieces of Neolithic art ever found in Europe. With an age of approximately five and a half thousand years, it's likely that the tomb was built by some of the earliest farmers ever to work on the Irish land. The megalithic tomb is split into two separate burial chambers, both of which are extensively decorated with murals and carvings. The tombs sit below a large stone cairn and are surrounded by six strategically placed curbstones. Even the curbstones were well decorated. Building and maintaining the tombs was clearly a work of dedication and love by the people responsible for putting them together. The crazy thing about this discovery is that it comes from Bruna Boyne World Heritage Site, a place that archaeologists are already supposed to have explored in full. Modern China is a powerhouse of global production. That's why the label Made in China appears in so many places, from the clothes you wear to the objects you have in your home. It even appears on some of the contents of this 800-year-old shipwreck, which was rediscovered off the coast of Indonesia in 2018. The familiar slogan, written in its native language, has helped archaeologists uncover the history of the wreck, which is at the bottom of the Java Sea. They believe that the wooden hull of the vessel rotted away centuries ago, leaving only the ceramics and luxury goods that it once carried strewn across the seabed. It's the wording of the label that's helped experts to date the ceramics. It refers to the Chinese government district of Jianyingfu. The area's name was changed to Jianyinglu after the invasion of the Mongols in 1278, meaning the ceramics couldn't have been made later than that year. Other goods lost in the wreck include elephant tusks and containers full of sweet-smelling resin. This would have been an extremely expensive loss for somebody when it happened. Did the famous lost city of Atlantis ever really exist? If it did exist, where was it before it sank? These are questions that most experts think we'll never get to the bottom of. But self-styled historian Matt Sibson believes he's already solved the mystery. According to his research, which was published in 2018, Atlantis is off the northwest coast of Ireland. We're less convinced that his timeline matches up. The island he's identified as Atlantis was actually known as Friesland and appeared on maps that were made during the 16th and 17th centuries. 
it vanishes from maps after that point. Nobody knows what happened to it, but a common supposition is that the sailors of the time had just got the location of Iceland badly wrong. Still, there does appear to be a large landmass beneath the waves in the position where Friesland used to be. It's visible on satellite imagery. Based on its location, Sibson believes that woolly mammoths may have existed on this sunken island thousands of years ago, and that Plato mistook these mammoths for elephants when he wrote of Atlantis. This all sounds a little far-fetched to us, but Sibson is convinced that he's correct. Did a nomadic tribe of skilled female potters travel around the Baltics 5,000 years ago? An increasing amount of evidence suggests that they did. During a time of history known as the Corded Ware Culture Period, it seems that the parts of the world that are now known as Finland, Sweden, and Estonia produced an especially gifted set of female artisans who created extremely fashionable pottery and then traded it all around the Baltic Sea region. The pottery is different from any style of pottery that came before it because of the inclusion of crushed ceramics and broken pottery mixed in with new clay. Much of the pottery appears to have been made in Sweden before later turning up in Estonia and Finland, where it seems the locals were taught to make ceramics using the same method, and so the trend continued. It's also possible that women born in Sweden were married to men who lived in Estonia and Finland, and so took their skills and their products with them when they moved with their new husbands. All of this suggests that the Baltic Sea wasn't an obstacle to the people of the Stone Age, but instead was a connection to people living in other lands. Many of the world's rainforests have yet to be fully explored, but they are slowly revealing their secrets. Archaeologists discovered two previously unknown ancient Mayan cities in the Mexican jungle in 2014. The bigger of the two cities has pyramid temples, a palace, an entrance designed like a huge human mouth, and a large ball court. Photos shot from the skies over central Yucatan and Campeche helped locate the cities. Both cities' architecture is typical of the Mayan classic period indicating that they were most likely constructed between the 7th and 11th centuries. A hieroglyphic inscription on one of the city's many stone altars confirms this, referring to the exact date of November 29th in the year 711. Lagunita is now the name of the larger city, while Tamchen is the name of the smaller. Archaeologists have also discovered ancient ruined buildings that may date back as far as 2,300 years, indicating that there was life at Tamchen long before the most recent city was founded there. It's been a few years since these cities were found, but with a little more digging, it might be possible to uncover even more ancient history at this site. Afghanistan is a devoutly Muslim country now, and has been for centuries, but way back in its distant history, it was a Buddhist land. And, it has the historical monuments to prove it. It used to have the Bamiyan Buddhas, but they were destroyed by fundamentalists in 2001. Now, the oldest and most celebrated reminder of those Buddhist times is the stupa of Takti Rostam. The site is something that the builders of famous archaeological locations like Ethiopia's Lalibela churches would have approved of, by which we mean the magnificent stupa has been carved directly into the rock. It's also very well fortified. The stupa is surrounded on all sides by a trench 25 feet deep, so nobody would have been able to gain access to it uninvited. Relics of the Buddha were once held inside the Harmika building at the top of the monument, while the caves toward the bottom acted as monastic cells, which would have been dark other than the slivers of light that would have penetrated the holes in the roof. It would have been a gloomy place to be if you were living in the stupa's lower levels, but perhaps that was all part of the spiritual experience. It feels like the discovery of an entire ancient city shouldn't be the kind of thing that happens all too often, and yet it's happened several times recently. We've already spoken about the discovery of two ancient Mayan cities in Mexico, 
And now here's another ancient city that was found in Harla, Ethiopia in 2017. Archaeologists think that the city might date back to the 10th century, and it must have been an important trading center. That latter supposition is based on the discovery of artifacts identified as coming from China, India, and Egypt at the site. A 12th century mosque is among the ruins of the old city, and it's been noted that the mosque is similar in style to those built in Somaliland and Tanzania during the 12th century. This might be the long-awaited proof that there was contact between the different Islamic communities and cultures that existed in Africa at the time. The discovery of the city came as a total surprise to the archaeologists responsible for finding it, as they were only in the city to see if they could find the root of the local myth that Harla was built by a long-lost race of giants. People nowadays scoff at anyone who has a corny motto on their social media profile or on the walls of their home, such as, Live, Laugh, Love. However, they shouldn't because people have been writing equally trite thoughts on objects since the dawn of time. Take, for example, this collection of 80 bronze mirrors. In April 2021, the mirrors were discovered in a cemetery in China's Shanxi province. The graves the mirrors come from are thought to be from the Warring States period, making them around 2,200 years old, according to archaeologists. Despite the fact that many of the graves were looted throughout antiquity, the mirrors were left alone, possibly as a sign of respect. Modern archaeologists have no such reservations, and as such, they took them from next to the heads of the dead. The mirrors were occasionally discovered with traces of silk attached to them, suggesting that they were placed in silk purses or bags prior to funerals. They've been discovered on the bodies of both men and women, implying that whatever symbolic role they served was universal. Eternal happiness, live long in the memory, and riches for my family are among the slogans engraved on them. Scientists may never know who or what played a role in the creation of the Baigong pipes in China. The pipes are made of iron, which is a little problematic based on their age. They're at least 5,000 years old, although some alternative tests have suggested that they might be closer to 300,000. All of the pipes are hollow, and they're made of iron and calcium oxide. The most recent set of tests performed on them was carried out in 2001. That gave them yet another age, this time 150,000 years, and that predates any known civilization in the area by a very long time. At any rate, it's long before the Iron Age. That rules out the idea of them being created by humans, and so it's no wonder that conspiracy theorists claim that they were part of an ancient alien base. Is there a more plausible explanation? Possibly. Experts say that the pipes were created when minerals formed around the roots of trees thousands of years ago, encasing them completely. Over time, the trees rotted away leaving behind only the hollow shells of the mineral casings that grew around them. That might be correct, but if so, shouldn't something similar have happened elsewhere in the world? Old Dongala might sound like the place your Wi-Fi dongle might go when it dies, but it's actually a ghost town in the northern state of Sudan, standing on the eastern bank of the River Nile. It's unoccupied now, save for an archaeological mission that started in 1964. But between the 4th and 14th centuries, this city was the capital of the Nubian kingdom of Makuria. The modern city that replaced it is around 50 miles away, founded by people who abandoned the old town in mysterious circumstances in the 14th century. There's no sign of conflict in the ruins of the city, and it isn't thought that it was ever flooded by the Nile. So why the occupants of that era chose to leave it is a riddle without a solution. The original exodus appears to have taken place before the 14th century. According to writings in the Book of Knowledge, by the year 1348, the native people had already left the town, and it had been resettled by Genoese merchants. There's no apparent reason why they'd have left the area either, so that's two different sets of citizens who upped and left without leaving a note of explanation. 
If you can explain how the incredible Temple of Jupiter in Baalbek, Lebanon was built, please leave us an answer in the comments, and we look forward to your new career as an architectural and archaeological genius. At Baalbek, we can find the single largest carved block of granite in history. Nobody's managed to break that record for at least 9,000 years. It's so old that some even think that the Temple of Jupiter was built on top of it, rather than being an intentional part of the design. The quarry the stone was drawn from is close to the temple, but there are no visible means of moving the huge stone uphill from one place to the other using the technology that was available at the time. Its total weight is over 1,000 tons, and even then it's only a baby compared to the south stone, which was left back in the quarry unfinished. That one weighs in excess of 1,600 tons. The level of craftsmanship that went into making the stones is almost unimaginable and remains totally unexplained. Local legends say that Baalbek was a city of giants. Maybe there's something to those old myths for once. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!